for something because any orange? <laughs> I think we're more orange. Why are we so orange today? Well, oh welcome God. to <laughs> orange. Welcome to color. Orange Central today. I'm gonna see if I can do something about that. In the meantime, Laura, who are we and who are those two talking oranges? Yeah. <laughs> So um, this uh, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind BackpackerGuide.nz, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide. So if you have any questions about traveling in New Zealand, whether it's doing a week holiday or a road trip around the North Island and the South Island or doing a year long working holiday, we have loads of information on BackpackerGuide.nz all about that and it's free to you so you can go on there at any time and just browse the website but if you're not really into reading we do this live Q&A session every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time where are our times? Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 we are less orange now Oh, I just, good. I yeah. just uh, that. So here you go. Here are All the right. time, guys. Yeah. So around the world, um, like I said, it's 8 a.m. New Zealand time on a Sunday, but around the world, that's um, on a Saturday evening in the UK and France. That's around 8 a.m. I mean, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. In the US, it's either 3 p.m. EST or 12 p.m. PST on a Saturday afternoon. In India, it's bright and early. It's 12.30 a.m. on a Sunday and in Australia, that's 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Um, so, yeah, every single Sunday we do this live Q&A session for you guys to come onto the live chat and ask your questions about traveling in New Zealand. But also throughout the week, we do take your questions as well in the comments of any of our YouTube videos. And we pull them together so that we can go through all those questions as well during this live Q&A session. So even if you don't make our Q&A session, then you can still answer your questions and we'll put up the videos throughout the week. So in the meantime, if you do have any questions that you want to ask us, feel free to pop onto the live chat right now and tell us uh, your questions, but also tell us where you're from, where you're watching from and when you plan to come to New Zealand. Yeah, and uh, wh yeah, wh what are you planning on doing in New Zealand? We have had a lot of questions about a lot of like really kind of interesting kind of things to do in New Zealand lately. So we have had someone actually contacted us and they come here for a foam sword fight um, <laughs> yeah. party, which is quite cool. So it's called El, uh, El Alap, L-A-I-P-I, -I uh, a lap, basically. A lap, okay. No, lap. So it's like oh. live action role playing. So okay. you kind of like go in the forest and you actually replay, like, you know, live action ah. stuff, which is really awesome. Is that so, in like the Lord of the Rings forest? Well, I mean, stuff? if they come and they're going to do it near Wellington, they have yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty fun. It's, it's not okay <laughs> if they're not doing it uh, uh, there. So I think that's a, that's a cool thing to do. Yeah. And yeah, in the meantime, it is the busy season right now in New Zealand. It's tourist galore at the moment. There is heaps of uh, things to do every activity is open every restaurant is open like uh, you know it is literally the best time to come and enjoy new zealand the beautiful weather yeah um the weather has been absolutely fantastic this week um white water rafting um is absolutely epic we've done some more water rafting recently and it was absolutely phenomenal and uh yeah so if you guys are planning your trip just come on and ask your question say hi in the live chat and say hey uh, robin laura i have a question in the meantime Let's go through, through some questions that we received. And um, it sounds very simple, but Smithy on YouTube asked us a question, which I think um, actually a lot of pe people are stressed about. So uh, let's go over that. So Smithy on YouTube says, you guys are so great. So many good tips on your channel. Thank you, Smithy. <laughs> um, it's a, he says, I'm a bit stressed about arriving in New Zealand. Can you tell me how, he the, how it is to at the airport, like custom, biosecurities, and else, the whole arrival, arrival process. Who that was hard to read. I struggle on this one. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. all right. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a, a subject of stress for quite a lot of people. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to board the plane from, you know, wherever you're from. So, you know, India, uh, France, the UK, USA, and, and then you're going to land in New Zealand. And then what happens? You know, you left to your own devices and you're like oh what's going on okay so you land in new zealand the plane lands safely uh, in new zealand probably at the auckland airport it's new zealand's largest airport and where i think yeah. it's, it's something like 96 percent yeah of, uh, most arrivals right come into yeah. auckland so yeah. um so then you need to onboard your plane um so don't be the first one to like stand up from the pl like in the plane and just grab your luggage and just you know kind of rush. Run. <laughs> yeah exactly you know like the plane goes from front to uh to back so you know when it's your turn you stand up you take you know you take the luggage out and and you know you'll get out it, it won't get you out any faster we always see people 
kind of try to rush their way. And it's quite funny how usually you arrive at, at customs or baggage collection before them. So it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So the first thing you do is that you onboard the plane. And now the Auckland Airport is super well signposted. So there is literally only almost one way to go. Um, you, uh, you, you, you follow the arrows and you start making your way through the airport. It's very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, stop at the bathroom uh, if you want to. And then the first thing you're doing is to go to uh, pick up your luggages. Yeah, uh, is that before? At the carousel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course you need, yeah. because otherwise, by your security, you don't have that. <laughs> I was right? going to say, I wasn't sure if you go through immigration and customs first, no? I think, mate. Maybe... No, you go through passport control first. Oh, yeah, here you are. What yeah. you say? So, <laughs> then the first step is you go through passport control. Okay, so, yeah, after you've gone and followed all the signs, the first thing that you're doing is getting your passport ready because you're going to be going through immigration and passport control. Um, if you have um, a passport which is from from Europe or from the UK, from Australia, those sort of countries, and you have an e-passport, there is a smart gate at the Auckland airport where it just scans your passport. You look up at a camera and show your bright, shiny face like Robin likes to do um, and make everyone laugh at the airport uh, by pulling faces. <laughs> but yeah, they basically you can, um, you look up at this screen and uh, this camera and it show and you just, yeah, it takes a photo of you and then you just walk on through. The gate will hopefully open if everything's okay with your visa and your, if you've got like an automatic visa or a, if you're coming on a visitor visa, which doesn't need, um, doesn't need like an extra visa on top of that, then you'll be able to go right through um, passport control with ease. But if you do have um, a, a passport from any other country, or if you're having like, a, if you're coming to New Zealand on a bit of a different visa, then you'll have to go and actually talk to one of the immigration officers. There's queues to line up and just basically, you see the immigration officer, they look at your passport and usually ask you a few questions. It might be, um, it might be actually what to declare because you'll also need to hand over your arrival card, your passenger arrival card, and um, which we'll get onto a bit in the, in the moment. But yeah, they just ask you a few simple questions and usually it's just like, yep, yeah, there you go, go through. <laughs> <laughs> Generally is that there. If you do have visas that have some conditions, this is one of the options where they can actually check your condition. So let's say you're coming in New Zealand on a working holiday visa, which allows you to work and travel in New Zealand. Um, your visa may have some conditions, like you need to have medical and travel insurance for the length of your stay, or you need to have a minimum amount of amount of money on your bank account and all those kind of things. So this is when they may ask you your, uh, your, your kind of paperwork, yeah. but that's pretty much it. So usually you get a guy which has a very stern face and ask you one question, Stamp it, move on. Actually, very often you don't even have a stamp. So yeah, here you stamps go. are pretty old school now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, sorry. they're not really, but yeah. <laughs> I suppose like when you go through the smart gate, they don't um they don't exactly stamp your passport then. So yeah. yeah. All right. So uh once you move from there, then finally you go to luggage pickup. Yes. Sorry about that. So um once you have done basically kind of the paperwork, you kind of are allowed into New Zealand. Uh, once you're loaded into New Zealand, then you can go through the rest of the formalities, which is picking up your bags and then the rest of the, of the process. So to pick up your bag, you need to find which one is the correct carousel for you. So to find the correct carousel for your bags. Yeah, so usually they have signage up. Um, even when you first enter the baggage claim area, there is a big sort of TV screen listing what flights, um, you know, that have just come in and which number carousel your flight um, is where you can collect your baggage. But then along the whole, all the baggage area, each carousel has a really well signposted number. And then it says it, even on the TV screen for each carousel, which flight that carousel is for so that bit is super easy just go over there and wait there's usually a lot of trolleys and stuff you know how airports work there's a lot of luggage trolleys that you can pick up and um go and wait for your luggage if you need that uh, yeah uh, one thing that you're going to notice is that there is a red line on the floor all around the carousel just to so you stay behind it so people that see their luggage they have this the place to move and go pick up their bags so just make sure you kind of respect that. And uh, the, the, if you miss your luggage as well, um, you know, it's not too bad. It just goes in the loop and it comes back again. Yeah. Um, it happens to us all the time because we're so busy taking pictures or filming or doing this just for all our tips videos. And then we're like, oh, no, we just missed the luggage. It just takes another yeah. loop. Yeah. We just always look like the fools. Okay, now you have you have um, loaded all your luggages onto the, uh, the your little 
a car trolley if you uh, want to take your if you want yeah. the trolley i mean trolleys are not compulsory but yeah. so but you put him in the car because it's much more fun yeah uh, so you put him on the car uh you have all your luggages with you so that's all the positions that you're gonna have when traveling in new zealand and that's your time to pass through by your security and so you're gonna arrive between in front of two signs that's gonna say nothing to declare or something to declare yeah so um yeah like robin says there's those two aisles that you can walk through. There's also another aisle for like New Zealand passport holders and non-New Zealand passport holders. So obviously you just follow whichever one applies to you. But usually that that's more when there have been an influx of flights and it's really busy. But most of the time there's someone waiting at the end just telling you where to walk and where to go. So there's, there's a lot of um, staff at the airport basically sort of telling you where to go and what to do. So you don't really get lost or anything like that. So after you've queued, is there anything you want to tell me? I just want to say, so about the nothing to declare or something to declare. If you have any doubt, declare it. Honestly, almost every, I think there's never a single time when I came back into New Zealand that I did not have something to declare. I never had to surrender any items or anything. Most of the time it was for you know, no reason. So, for example, uh, when Nora and I goes to the South Pacific Islands and we go, we always have our own snorkel mask and we love to do snorkeling and, and, and you know, free diving and all of that in the South Pacific. Um, and because it has been in the, you know, water and everything like that, despite the fact that we clean them really well, we always declare it. And then we, they ask us, have you cleaned it? We tell them, yes, we use soap and we clean, you know, we clean all the gears. They're, okay, that's good. You can pass. But we've declared it. If we don't declare it and then they find it and then they find something wrong with it, then we may have a fine. It's the same for the food. It's the same for, um, well, for a ton of items, actually. In fact, we have a full video about that, about, um, you know, biosecurity in New Zealand. So um, make sure to check out this video so you know what to declare but just just to make it sure make it very clear any food any items that have been used for any outdoor activity all need to be declared so that usually cover almost everything so just keep that in mind yeah so that declaration process actually begins when you're on the plane and you're given your um passenger arrival card which is a thin piece of cardboard with basically a form to fill out on there on the front of it it has an um, um, spaces for you to fill out your personal details, so your name, your passport number, where you're flying from, all that sort of thing. And then on the back, there's a sort of like tick tick box, multiple, what they call multiple answer questions or whatever you call those things, um, where it's kind of like yes and no answering questions. Like, do you have this in your luggage? Do you Have you brought with you $10,000 worth of cash with you? You know, that sort of thing. And you just tick yes or no. And it's this form that you actually need to keep with you. And you, when you go through the biosecurity, which is the step that we're just talking about now, when you actually finally get to the biosecurity officer after you've got your baggage from the baggage claim area, this is the card that you hand over to him. And that's basically what you are declaring. He reads that. And if you ticked yes to any of those questions, then he will ask you more questions on that. But if there has been something that you've forgotten about that you were like, oh, actually, yes, I do have an apple in my bag or something. This is also your opportunity to verbally declare that to the biosecurity officer. So if he, when he says, do you have anything to declare? You say, oh, actually I've packed this or I've done this. Is that okay? Type thing. It's always best to just basically you know, actually say, like, I do have things to declare, even if you're not sure. And even if, for instance, you're unsure, if you, you know, if sometimes you're not allowed to, well, one of the things you need to declare is plant based products. And you might have, for instance, a wooden um, hairbrush or something in your bag, like something made deck out of, of cards. A deck of cards is made of paper. We get stuff yeah. every single time because we always travel with the deck of cards to, to play some games, you know, on planes or, 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 or when you travel. Every single time. They stop it. They ask us if we can open. I mean, Laura is going to go through that. But yeah. Yeah, every single time they check her bags because of a deck of cards. Yeah. So all those sort of even small things that like if you're unsure about, you just say like, oh, yeah, well, I do have this that's made out of wood or I do have this or, you know, so it's always best to declare because if you are trying to, you know, if it looks like you're trying to hide something or smuggle something through biosecurity, <laughs> that's when obviously they're going to give you a fine. And you do, if you have something found in your bags, that you haven't declared, then it is an instant 400 New Zealand dollar fine. So do bear that in mind. That's not a good, yeah. good start to your holiday. So um, 
Yeah. So, yeah. So this is the power you're actually the immigration, op uh, not the immigration officer, the biosecurity officer is going through the questions with you. M most of the time it's just like, yep, yeah, OK, um, go through type thing. Um, do you have anything to add yeah. about that part? No, sometimes they just ask and, it, you know, when you pass your bag into the x-ray and they have a doubt about something, they ask, you know, can I look into the bag? And yeah, they just check it. And as I said, usually that's when people start sweating, but it's literally the deck of card or the wooden toothbrush or, yeah. you know, just something like that. And it's just as, as, as silly as that. Yeah. Um, now, so like the, the thing that people get this, uh, stopped or, or the most about is their shoes. Um, so if you do have, you know, your, the sole of your shoes is dirty, like there's some dirt and everything like that, that will give you a brush and you will have to brush it. But that's that's basically it. No, not yeah. much to add about that. Yeah, so that actually just brings us to the final step, which is actually just putting your bags through the biosecurity x-rays. So once you've gone past the biosecurity officer, you then have this sort of last x-ray thing to do where one of the attendants um, helps you with your bags to put it onto a little bit of a carousel, which puts it into an x-ray. You put all your luggage onto there. That's including um, any like carry-on luggage, your check-in luggage, every, basically all the bags that you have you put into the x-ray and yeah they basically just um check with that whether there's anything that's been flagged up and they might need to check your bags after that most of the time they don't most of the time if you you know you've declared everything they just um yeah you, they just help like well they just basically let you on your way and you go out into the arrivals area of the Auckland airport um, but otherwise, if there is any problems, they will uh, they will just bring you to the side and sort of maybe ask you a few questions or ask to see something in your bag. Yeah, and then moving on to the next, the last step of uh, you know your time at uh, uh, the Auckland Airport is finding new transport to go wherever you need to go next. Yeah. So uh, either you have already sorted out a camper van or car rental, and most often they will offer free shuttle pickup from the airport. So then you find the sign of uh, um, of where they are, but they're usually always in the same place, which is a passenger pickup area. Um, or otherwise, you can take the Sky Bus, which is the bus that goes all the way to Auckland City. You can take the Super Shuttle, which is the shuttle that goes door to door to any addresses in Auckland, which is really um, fantastic and actually the best value for money. And if you want to catch an Uber, which is really not as cheap as you think in New Zealand, you can get that from also the passenger arrival pickup area. And yeah, it's very simple. There is not much else to. Um, um, to say about arriving in the Auckland Airport, aside from uh, if you decide to do some duty-free shopping, this will be before you pick up your luggages. So that's uh, that's in the step literally from when you walk from your plane to going to pick up your luggage, and actually even before um, customs and so before immigration. So that's literally just in that that section yeah. right here. If you want to get yourself some alcohol or some cigarettes, um, there are signs all over the airport with the current allowance so you know how much you can actually bring with you but yeah if you did find this video super useful we have plenty more on the channel and to say thank you for all our hard work hit the like button that's always really nice to just you know we spend a lot of time um helping you guys out all right let's go back to the live chat there's a lot of things happening Ooh. i'm gonna read every everything what is happening there all right um so we're having uh Julia. Okay, i'm gonna destroy all your name guys <laughs> Julius that says, hey guys, I'm leaving for New Zealand next week. Your videos mm. have helped a lot with planning and figuring out what to do. I can't wait for next week. Keep up the good work. Thank cool, you very thank much you. for the support. <laughs> um, Julius will be staying until January and will be traveling around in the camper van. That's cool. Um, we actually did uh, answer some questions about camper van travel uh, just last week. So yeah. uh, if you haven't watched last week's video, uh, you definitely should check it out. Um, Abdul Satar say nice, but I'm very poor, man. I like New Zealand. Well, New Zealand is a great place to visit, and there is plenty of work opportunities here as well, so it's cool. Um, Luca is encouraging Gilles to come to New Zealand and have a lot of fun, so that's cool. cool. Um, Athiraz Shetty um, says hello, Robin and Laura. This is Athira from India. Me and my wife just returned yesterday from our 10 days New Zealand vacation. Your video really helped. To plan and ex execute our itinerary perfectly. Wow, cool. I like an itinerary that goes perfectly. Yeah. I love it. Um, uh, and then he says that the highlight was driving on New Zealand roads. They are so scenic, uh, in such good condition, and so empty. It's so pleasing to have uh, to not have traffic like I face in my city, Mumbai. Mm -hmm. I've heard that the Mumbai traffic was uh, notoriously crazy, but uh, <laughs> yeah, New Zealand roads are usually pretty empty, aside yeah. from like from. 
let's say 3.30 p.m. to like 5 p.m. around Oakland where you will have about 30 minutes worth of traffic. Yeah. Aside from that, everywhere else yeah. in New Zealand, it's pretty empty. Yeah. Mm. All right. Then we also have Duan Gresh. Every single one of your names, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I says, hi, this is Duan from Malta. I want to come to New Zealand in 2022. Forward planning. I yeah. like that. <laughs> I was checking on working holidays visas for my country. On the website, it says maximum 50 per year and they're all taken. But when I made an account and went to the apply section, the application were open for my country. I fill out a contact form to ask about it but they have an answer. Is there any other way to contact Immigration New Zealand about it? Um, they have a phone number that you can find on their website, so you can definitely call them. Be prepared to wait a long time on the phone. Um, and sometimes when we call Immigration New Zealand, we sometimes are on hold for an hour to an hour and a half, yeah. so you have to be prepared for big delay. And when you send them email, it can take them up to a month at the moment to reply. They have a huge influx of people contacting them, so be aware for that. Um, but yes, there are plenty of countries uh, uh, that have a minimum requirement, sorry, um, a, a limit to the amount of people that can come on a working holiday visa. So Malta, yes, it's 50. Uh, Mexico, for example, I think it's 2,000. So there is this limit. So um, what happens is that the quota open at a specific day of the year, and then you apply, uh, you apply on that day, and it's the first 50, for example, for Malta that will get it. Yeah. So you've got to time yourself very well. There's a really good website um, for uh, knowing when to apply and all the requirements. It's called workingholidaynewzealand.com. Working holidaynewzealand.com so check this one out it's just an information website it's nothing uh, you won't be able to contact them or anything like that um, it's just just for information yeah. purposes uh, okay we have Ravija Batane that says also instead of doing loop can I save time taking a flight from Queenstown or any other place I need to fly back to Auckland Yes, definitely. That's the best way to travel around New Zealand to make an itinerary. Yeah, so you can definitely, um, one of the, the main sort of um, domestic, well, yeah, domestic airports in uh, the South Island are Christchurch and Queenstown. And often they have some of the cheaper prices to actually make that domestic flight back to Auckland. So you can definitely start off in Auckland, make your way around the North Island, go down to Wellington, take the ferry from Wellington to the top of the South Island in Picton and do a loop of the South Island, either ending in Queenstown or Christchurch. And from there, that's a, they're good places to fly back to Auckland yeah. from. Another great way to do an itinerary around New Zealand is to actually start from the South Island. So you can arrive in Queenstown or in Christchurch and then pick up a car or a camper van and then drive all the way up um, and finishing in Auckland. Yeah. Usually you will save a lot on mon of money on your car rental as well because most people actually drive from north to south. So if you go from the other way, you help them with their fleet control and usually the prices are cheaper. So that's another really good way to, um, to plan your trip in New Zealand rather than going Auckland down to Queenstown flip it on its head and start in Queenstown and drive the way up. What you can yeah. do is when you arrive in Auckland, uh, you can just take a connecting flight to go straight to Queenstown. The flights are pretty cheap and the connection between the international airport and the domestic airport is super easy. We actually have a video about the connecting um, both, uh, both terminals, terminals yeah. um, on the channel. So, yeah. Good tip. Uh, Gilles, uh, Gilles, I'm still going to try all the time. Gilles, Gilles, Gilles. I'm going to go for Gilles Kroendik says, um, how is the connection uh, between the international <laughs> terminal and the domestic terminal at the Auckland airport? I literally just say that. Um, I have two hours between uh, my international arrival and the domestic flight to Christchurch. Oh, that's like the timing's perfect. Yeah. So, um, yes, actually, the Auckland airport is pretty well organized. You have two options. You can either take the bus or you can walk. Yeah. So, what? yeah, like Robin says, you can take the bus. Um, there's buses waiting outside of the international terminal. Um, and how much does it cost? It's free. What? Yeah. So um, the, the only thing with that is obviously they do wait a little bit before driving. So, but they are very frequent. So you'd only be They're waiting. Like about 10 minutes. Yeah. I you'd think, only yeah. be waiting maybe about five minutes and then it would take about, it's about 10 or five minutes to get. To I think it's a 10 minute walk. The other option is walking, but I think it's a 10 minute walk. So I'd be surprised if it's a 10 minutes bus ride. I think it's about five minutes Probably bus five ride. Minute really bus quick. Drive, yeah. So, yeah, that's one way to do it. And obviously, that's a good option if you have a lot of baggage and things. But alternatively, if you don't want to wait around for the bus or you're just keen to get to um, 
get to the international terminal, I mean, the domestic terminal terminal fast at your own time. Um, I would recommend walking, which is very easy to do. There are some big, uh, there's a big line on the floor. I don't know if it's green or red. I think it might be green. I've forgotten the color of this line. I think it's but... green. It's a bright green line that you literally follow. It will take you on the footpath and then yeah. you will cross the, the street and then you go, you literally just follow that. And um, yeah, if you do have a lot of luggage, as Laura says, you can still put them on the, uh, on, a trolley. On, the on the little trolley that you can get from the airport because they have them in both sides. Yeah. So you can definitely get that. And that will help you stretch your leg after such a long flight. So I yeah. strongly recommend doing that. Also, it's just, literally, it's one of the best walk in New Zealand. It's so well appointed. You have like <laughs> water fountain all along the way. There's a little park. You can sit down. And again, it's less than 10 minute walk. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, that's personally my favorite way. Actually, even Laura and I, even when we are a bit on the rush and everything, we'd rather walk it than take the bus and everything. So sometimes it has made us rush a little bit, but uh, it's, it's it's a bit more fun that way. Yeah, and it's slightly more eco-friendly. Hey, you go, <laughs> save the planet. Um, so, yeah, no, it's super simple. Let's say it's about 10 minutes, um, and then, yeah, you arrive at the domestic terminal. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, then that's the same thing. If you go from the uh, domestic terminal to the international, it's very easy as well. So you got two options, either the bus. Uh, it's a really, like, kind of big, spacious bus. You're actually mostly going to have to stand up in the bus because there is plenty of space for luggages and everything. It's not your traditional kind of bus. And, uh, yeah, otherwise you do um, you, you do the do little the walk. walk. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Hilles, do the, do the walking. You, are, you have to tell me how to pronounce your name. Uh, I kind of want some help right here. Uh, Adil Mula says, Hello, Robin and Laura. Do wheelchair and other equipment for the handicap need to be declared? I, I don't think so. Really? Declared? Oh, no, 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 sorry, not declared, but there will be inspect. Sorry, let's just speak yeah. further. There will be inspected, like when they pass it through the x ray, um, they, they, will, they will be inspected. Um, but I uh, know, declared, no, sorry. No, sorry. you don't need to declare um, equipment like that, no. 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 Unless it falls under any of the categories yeah. that is on the back of the passenger arrival card. If, for instance, it's made out of a certain material that might be something similar to what yeah. it asks on the Yeah, if it's leather, for example, if, if the back of the seat is leather, for example, you'll have to declare it. Yeah, uh, um, it, but it goes to goes to show if like anything you're unsure of it's yeah. always best to declare it so you know if you do have something on your wheelchair that maybe you're like oh maybe that i do need to declare that while i'm going through customs then just do it anyway just say like yeah i'm declaring my wheelchair it's made out of this or whatever yeah. and that, that's absolutely fine so why not if anything <laughs> though, if anything they will respect the fact that you declare something and you weren't sure rather than try to sneak something past yeah all right, so we have Meg F10 that says, good afternoon for California, from California. Good Hello. afternoon. What time is it in California right now? Uh, is it already the afternoon? Oh, yeah, it's the afternoon yesterday. <laughs> well, it's either 3 p.m. PST oh, yeah. or 12 p.m. PST. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm questioning myself. <laughs> you tell the people every week. <laughs> So uh, Meg says, or she says, I think, um, I made a playlist with all your helpful videos and was going to watch this when I noticed there was a live chat. Yeah, look at that. Good timing. Yeah. Um, I will be traveling to New Zealand in December. Do you have any recommendation on clothes to pack or is there a video link you can share? Um, love your channel and we continue watching all your videos on my playlist when this live chat is done. And we'll definitely hit the like button. Yay. Thank cool. you so much for the great work. So first up, by the like button. It's a great way to say thank you to us because we do all those things and it costs you nothing to just click like, but it really helps kind of YouTube know that this video actually helps people. So that, that's the thing. All right, so uh, close to park for uh, for summer in New Zealand. Should we um, kind of go and talk about it for a while? Yeah, I think sure. it's an important one. Okay, so Meg, uh, hang on for a minute. I'm just going to um, answer a couple of extra quick questions. Then we're actually going to go... Um, in depth into that, so you can grab a pen and paper, and we're going to do a list all together. Um, all right, so Athira says, the early morning walk toward Cathedral Cove was really rewarding as I avoided the crowd that come after 9 a.m. Yeah, that's Very... a good idea. Actually, we talked about that. I remember we, we mentioned yeah. that, so yeah. S. Connolly says, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for your videos and, uh, and all the articles. Uh, they have been extremely helpful. I'm arriving in New Zealand in September 2021. My parents are thinking of coming in December 2020. 2020 is a correct year. Okay, so she's coming this next year, yeah? Yeah. I was curious if you had any tips for Christmas time, busy season, and festivities, uh, avoiding the crowds. Okay, we'll talk about it in a minute as well. So we do Meg, then we do um, Miss or Mrs. Connelly. 
Um, Josi says, hi, uh, coming to New Zealand in early December. Very much excited. Stick Woo! around. We're going to actually tell you what to pack as well. And uh, here we go. All right. So Meg F10 on YouTube says, I will be traveling in New Zealand in December. Do you have any recommendation on clothes to pack? All right, Laura, December in New Zealand, what season it is? What's, yeah. what's going on in New okay, Zealand in December? Okay, so December in New Zealand, because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, is summer. And it is the first month of summer. And yeah, that usually means that when the sun is shining, it, it is pretty warm. So you are going to want to pack some summer clothes. But it also... This is also New Zealand, so the weather does change a lot. So you do need to be sort of prepared for any type of weather scenario. Um, so, yeah, we'll go through all the different types of clothing that you should be packing for summer in New Zealand, basically. Um, starting with, uh, well, what should we start with? Well, <laughs> we, we, let's start with like the worst, the worst case scenario. You yeah. always need to have a rain jacket in New Zealand because we're on an island. And if you look at a map of New Zealand, it's pretty narrow, yeah. right? And so that means that the weather passes very, very easily between the Tasman Sea and the uh, Pacific Ocean. So uh, rain happens frequently in New Zealand. It's pretty famous for that. That's why New Zealand is so green and so beautiful. And for this reason, you absolutely need a rain jacket. Yeah. Now, you don't want uh, too big of a rain jacket. Yeah. So obviously, you just want a light rain jacket being summer in New Zealand. And it's usually not too cold um, around December. Uh, so usually if you whatever you're wearing underneath your rain jacket or having some extra layers to wear underneath um, is a good way just in case it does get a little bit chilly. But the rain jacket's usually really good for um, obviously keeping yourself dry when you're out and about, but also good as a windbreaker if you're doing any hikes, for instance, um, on exposed sort of hills or mountains. For instance, if you're doing the Tongariro Crossing, which is one of the most popular walks to do in New Zealand. That, for instance, is also very good to have a rain jacket just in case you get a windy day and it takes the edge off the chill if, um, yeah, with your rain jacket. Um, that also leads us on to something else to pack, which is hiking shoes or hiking boots. What most people do when they come to, are you wanting to say something? Yeah, no, but that's okay. You keep going. I, I like it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if we had to talk five hours oh, about rain jackets. We, we, we had a different format for, for that, but that's okay. Let's keep going with that. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I could just see the like killer look in your eye. Like, I wasn't what are you doing? I was just I was just listening. All right, so yeah. Um <laughs> obviously because in New Zealand you are going to be doing a lot of well, most people do like to do a lot of walks in New Zealand, and I assume that's going to be the same for you. Yeah. You do want to have a sturdy pair of walking shoes or hiking boots. Um, usually this is really much a preference on what you usually like to wear. Hiking boots tends to be more for people that want to do multi-day hikes and they have sort of like heavy backpacks to carry and the Extra ankle support is always good, but most of the time you just need sort of um, like hiking shoes that are a bit, you know, not the high top like boots. I tend to disagree with that. I always have the high boots because I'm yeah. always jumping around and everything. So that's where yeah. Laura and I have very different view on on, on what we pack. You know, same thing that backpack and suitcase. Laura likes the suitcase. I like the backpack, you know. For the hiking boots, she likes the, the low, like normal, basically shoes yeah. style hiking shoes. And I like the high the, the higher one that covers your ankle just because I like to kind of jump around, roam around and everything. And I, I, I will break my ankle every two days if I didn't have a good pair of hiking boots. Yeah, so my... like I say, it is really down to personal preference. But there's there's two types of hiking boots or shoes. Well, there's hiking yeah. boots or hiking shoes. So obviously, whichever one you prefer, that's definitely a must to pack into yes. your suitcase for New Zealand. But another feature of your hiking shoes that you definitely need is to make sure that they're waterproof because, like we said before, it does rain at any time of the year in New Zealand. And hiking with wet feet isn't that fun. So make sure that you do get like waterproof hiking shoes, even with that sort of Gore Tex or like waterproof membrane inside. Um, yeah, there's really so many waiting. different names. For yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. Um, and even, even if it's not raining, let's not think just okay, always for worst case scenario. There are some hikes when you have to cross a little stream. It's usually really yeah. shallow, but that can definitely get your feet really, really wet. All right, cool. So uh, for the rest of the clothing, what we're going to do, we're going to go through a, a few different sections. And the first thing that uh, that uh, that you, you need to consider is that you're going to be doing a lot of travel, coming all the way from where Meg is from California, for example. Um, it's a long flight, so you want to be comfortable. So let's talk about clothing that you want to have to actually be really comfortable in a plane. Um, 
just because this this definitely just wearing jeans and, and hiking boots and everything is not necessarily the best yeah. and, and best way to kind of be comfortable. You want something like nice, comfy, like sweater and leggings. Now, when you are uh, thinking about uh, maybe traveling with your leggings, you know it's super comfortable and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the perfect thing to travel with. Um, but you also maybe want to think about... Uh, picking a legging that you're going to be able to use again and not just for your travel. So maybe pick some leggings that you can use for hiking. Yeah, so also um, you can couple some comfortable, what would we say, leggings or maybe even hiking um, pants or something. Yeah. They're usually very comfortable um, for for a flight, but also good and a versatile piece of clothing to use for um, hiking as well. Um, again, you want to, uh, especially you don't want to do hiking in jeans. They, if they do get wet or anything like that, or you sweat into them, it takes ages for them to dry. Yeah. So you definitely don't want to have like jeans for hiking or even for that flight um, over to New Zealand. Having something that dries quickly is super important. That's also comfortable for walking and, and basically for sitting on your ass for the whole flight. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah and, and speaking of that, actually, it's a great transition. You also want, obviously, to have a top which is going to keep you warm, but not too warm and, and still going to be comfortable. So Laura is actually wearing merino wool. I'm wearing merino wool. Yeah. We swear by merino wool. It's super comfortable. Uh, if it gets wet, uh, wool actually doesn't get too cold. Like if you do have cotton, like my T-shirt right now, if it was to get wet, I will be really freezing really quickly. But if it's a little bit wet and it's wool, um, it will actually kind of um, stay kind of warm and keep your body temperature. So that's the great thing about merino wool. So we always recommend to have layers. So literally what I'm wearing right now, minus the pants, you want something more comfortable, but that's perfect for both traveling, um, uh, flying to New Zealand, also taking all the kind of bus or doing all the driving around New Zealand, um, as well as doing some hiking around. So those pieces of clothing are super comfortable. So um, so yeah, so right now we are uh, we want a rain jacket. We want a pair, a pair of really sturdy hiking boots. Uh, we want some comfortable hiking pants. Uh, we want some merino wool layers from the top for the top to be able to both hike and travel comfortably. Um, now, if you're actually traveling in summer, which you are in December, you may not want to be wearing pants at all time, despite the fact I personally choose to wear pants most of the time because of the sand flies and because my hiking pants are super light. I have some of those... Uh, uh, I have a pair of Columbia and Mammoth, 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 Mammoth um, uh, hiking pants, and those pants are, you know, they're made of a fabric which is super light, so it's perfect yeah. for summer. So it it uh, keeps um, me protected from the sun, which is really strong in New Zealand, as well as uh, from all the sand flies. So I, I find it perfect. But you may want a pair of shorts. So yeah, yeah. think about shorts as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Anything else to add on that? that, or do that's, I keep that, that yeah, that's pretty mu much it. I just also obviously have a few um, pairs of t-shirts as well yeah. for when you, you know, if you are getting quite warm and stuff, you obviously uh, will want to like strip off a bit of clothes and stuff like that. But um, all, like Robin says, this, the sun in New Zealand is very strong. So you will also um, either make sure you pack lots of sunscreen to make sure that you're, if you do have your skin exposed so that you can lather up in sunscreen or make sure that you have some clothes that are light and um, but do cover up like your arms and around your neck and stuff like that um, if you don't want to wear sunscreen all the time. Yeah. Um, so uh, speaking of clothes that are light, um, the thing that we kind of say in most of our videos, and you probably see that, Meg, you were mentioning that you are making a playlist of videos uh, of us to watch. Um, we recommend so many times to do layering, meaning that we never kind of have a really thick jumper. That's not what we buy. So I wouldn't buy anything thicker than this jumper right here. I wouldn't buy like really, really thick super epic like snow jacket for yeah. example we buy a lot of like um, thin layers like that and we put them on top of each other because the New Zealand weather is changing up so much it's so changing um, you want to be able to adapt to it so you know having having clothing like that like let's say merino wool t-shirt uh, then um, uh, a, a merino wool jumper and then a, a windbreaker kind of jacket that allows me to literally be able to weather 90% of the weather that you will be able to get yeah. in New Zealand. And because they may all happen in the same day, it is so perfect. So um, think about any kind of thermal under layers. That would be really, uh, really cool to have um, uh, as well. And again, think about which material you want them in. The good thing with merino wool layers is that they don't retain the heat. I mean, they don't uh, uh, heat you up too much in yeah. summer as well. So they kind of like, they, they're your aircon system to carry with you. Yeah. They're, they're not too hot in summer and they're, they're, they're really hot in, in winter. So it's just perfect. Yeah. 
So layering, layering, layering. Um, Absolutely. Now, speaking of, um, of, of going on a walk and having to adapt to the weather, once you decide to take a some layer, you have to put them in a day pack. Yes, yeah, so definitely have yourself like a little, um, I would recommend having sort of like a small backpack to take with you on hikes, but also when you're just out exploring as well, you're obviously gonna wanna make sure that you have um, something that you, you're gonna like be carrying quite a few things around when you're out on day trips. You might wanna take some water around with you, some sunscreen, you maybe your sunglasses. And also because like Robin says, with your taking your layers off and things, you wanna actually put them somewhere. So having a day pack is always right. Yeah, it's pretty essential. And uh, backpacks are always the um, more comfortable ways to go because just basically in New Zealand, the way that you travel is more, you know, you're doing a lot of walking and hiking and um, you're a lot more active. It's not like you're in a city where you have like a fashionable bag on the side and which is kind of like a little bit, it's a little bit impractical. So yeah, the way that you sort of travel in New Zealand is more thinking about what's practical and what's yeah. going to be comfortable. And yeah, that's what most people do. And it's, yeah, it's the most comfortable way of going about it. And speaking of practical and uh, comfortable, let's talk about underwear. You obviously <laughs> want to have a bunch of underwear. So usually we recommend to have um, uh, enough kind of clothing. So underwear, T-shirts, socks and all of that for about like eight days, which will allow you to have enough until you are able to find a laundry either in your hotel, in your hostel, in your holiday park. There is laundries where you will be able to do laundries. Um, so for underwear, go for things which are really flexible. Um, you know, uh, for guys, we I personally wear a lot of uh, merino wool kind of underwear. Uh, Laura, she has those bras where you have, you can make them strapless and uh, all str or with strap and everything like that. So it goes with every kind of tops and everything like that. And she has like, what what the colors that you like, the skin colors, so they never seen on anywhere. So, yeah. you know, you can't, you, you cannot go with like the pieces which are gonna be the easiest. Yeah, to just sort of like the most versatile and exactly, things. Yeah. yeah, just the easiest things to go with. Um, <clears throat> speaking of uh, of clothes to underwear, we also have swimwear. So for swimwear, we recommend having a pair, a pair of swimwear, not just one, just because there is a lot to do in the water in New Zealand. And you know, if you go in the salt water and then you don't have necessarily time to wash it in between it starts thinking pretty bad yeah so uh so you may want to have a couple of uh, of uh togs uh which is the men's swimwear new zealand version so well togs is shorts. togs is the word in new yeah. zealand basically for swimwear so yeah. when you're on a tour and um and one of the and the tour guides say like oh did you bring your togs or um you know or if you're booking your tour and they're saying like oh make sure you bring a pair of togs togs is basically swimwear so yeah Here you and go. there's loads of like loads of reasons that you'll need to wear swimwear in New Zealand between doing like whitewater rafting the caving tours uh, going to hot pools going to the beach so yeah definitely swimwear is an absolute essential and the best accessory for swimwear is is uh travel towels oh, oh. oh i mean yeah it is obviously <laughs> um but i was thinking about the genders dogs like, and genders okay two, two kiwi words oh, okay ah, damn. sorry i didn't follow your <laughs> follow your flow there but <laughs> all right so uh, travel towels first um yeah definitely you want to have a uh, travel towel with you uh, microfiber uh doesn't smell uh dry super fast and take almost no space we swear by our travel towels, like yes. on microfiber. You can find them on Amazon. Um, and yeah, they're really awesome. We do have some articles on backpackerguide.nz that we are following while talking about that. And uh, we link to some of the ones that we are using. So uh, Meg, head to backpackerguide.nz and type clothes. And uh, when you type clothes on the search bar, you're probably gonna find the article that we, um, we're following right now. Um, all right, cool. But jandals, what is jandals? Why, why does it go so well with swimwear? Laura, tell me okay. about jandals. Jandals um, is the New Zealand word for flip-flops or thongs, as some people call them in other countries. Uh, basically, those sort of, or sandals. Um, but the reason to take take uh, flip-flops or jandals, um, for one reason, is they're pretty good to take into the showers if you're staying in hostels or holiday parks and you don't want to put your bare feet onto... Um, you know, onto showers that many people have been in. If you're a little bit like eek about that, then um, jandals are always a good thing to do. If you're a little bit what? <laughs> eek. <laughs> um, but also they're really, they're just always like a comfortable thing to keep on wearing if you're just sort of like need something quick to slip on. If you're, I don't know, if you're staying in, um, 
staying somewhere you need to pop down to get some supplies from a convenience store or you need to if you're just going to the beach for example they're always the best thing to wear on the beach um, and yeah especially in summer you might just want to sort of let your feet sort of um get some breathe. air yeah, yeah breathe for a bit so if you you know if you're doing something you know if you're not actually out and about hiking everywhere you just need something comfortable to wear and something quick and easy to put on then and also they take very little space in your suitcase or backpack then jandals or flip-flops are the way to go here you go now you go to the beach and you meet you meet some boys and then you're going to go out so you need obviously a, an outfit one outfit you really don't need much to go out with so something where you can go to the bar we don't have like massive nightclubs in new zealand and everything like that but you won't have one outfit to go out for for the guys you may want to have one shirt doesn't have to be the most fancy shirt but just maybe one shirt and uh, yeah you'll find yeah. that um like in bars and restaurants and stuff like there there's really not really a big scene of people wearing yeah. formal clothing in New Zealand everything is very casual so you don't need to worry about like like barely anyone wears high heels in New Zealand so you know like I know that back in Europe and stuff maybe in the US as well like people are wearing high heels and things that's just not a thing in New Zealand and yeah you just have some wedges and then and you you you're fine wedges the shoes not the food um, the wedges are heels as well though aren't they no, which is they are like no, they're really like flat heels. Oh, okay. heels. oh yeah, basically just just go, you know, just just take things casually. You don't have to be like you don't need to dress up, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and finally, you want something to sleep in, so yeah, have a PJ. Uh, because you may be staying in shared accommodation, so you don't necessarily uh, want to uh, want to be sleeping in your ninety tighties. Mm -hmm. Uh, you yeah. may, you but may I mean, if you are a... staying in private accommodation, yeah, wear, wear whatever you like. Yeah, of course. I mean, sleep naked. Go yeah. ahead. But uh, but yeah, if you do, if you do happen to stay in private accommodation or, or something like that, I uh, wear PJ. It's 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 always nicer. Or to... shared accommodation. Yeah, yeah. Share, yes. So we shared accommodation. Wear PJ. So have like a something comfortable to sleep in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's basically all the clothes. Anything else you would think of? Um, oh, for socks, uh, if we can give you a recommendation, Meg, um, go for merino wool again. Uh, or just any type never, of wool, I yeah, think, yeah. Because like that, you don't have uh, cold and wet feet, so that's always quite handy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, we uh, uh, for extra accessories, obviously, um, we like to have hats and buffs just because the sun is really strong in New Zealand. So I have a hat or buff, something to kind of protect yourself from the sun. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All the clothes you need to pack for summer and especially December in New Zealand. Actually, it's December. You may want to pack yourself a Santa hat as well, just because that's what you wear in December, right? That's the fashion exercise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you do have extra questions, make sure to put them in the comments of this video. We're here to help every single week. And if you do find that useful, like and subscribe. Let's go back to the live chat. Um, all right, the last question I read was Meg's, uh, but uh, oof, there is so many other things. Mm. Okay, let's moving on. Um, Athira, Athira says, <coughs> watching the sunrise from a hot air balloon on our wedding anniversary was really a highlight. It was totally, we totally recommend ballooning Canterbury. It's worth the hefty price, at least on special occasions. Here you go. That's a recommendation from one of our watchers. Okay. Um, and it says, sadly, for uh, Milford Sound, uh, it was cancelled. We rescheduled the next day, but it got cancelled again since Milford Sound Road was closed for two consecutive days. Oh, no. It happens. There's yeah. only one road that goes to Milford Sound. So when that one road closes, it's kind of uh, yeah. no go. Um, what else happening? DJ Morningstar. Whoop, whoop, whoop. DJ Morningstar. 92.2. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Balaji. Uh, I'm from India. Your videos are very informative. I'm going to uh, do my PJ. PG. PG. Okay, PG, PG diploma in applied science at Lincoln University in Christchurch. I need to know about job opportunities in New Zealand. Well, you are at the right place. We have so many videos about job opportunities in New Zealand. So um, if you are watching uh, on, on the phone, you can go on the search bar of YouTube and you can search jobs backpackerguide.nz and you're going to find tens of videos about that and if you are on a desktop computer right now on your laptop you can just go on the search bar of our channel and just type jobs and you have all our videos about that and uh, yeah there is really tens and tens so you're definitely in the right place um he also says he'd be uh in Christchurch in february 2020 well that's really Ooh. soon preparing your trip much uh, Ideal says, thank you very much for your help this channel is really informative i wish every country adopted this concept the concept of our channel <laughs> well someone yeah. can do it. you can do one for for web for you i think you're from india you you told us last time so you can do one yeah. from india mm -hmm. just have to have a couch and start explaining <laughs> to people um 
Jyoti says, how expensive is clothing in New Zealand? It's more expensive than most places. Uh, yeah. From my experience, so I worked in travel in, in, in about 10 countries or a bit more than that. Um, it's definitely more expensive than in the US. So if you have a chance to shop in the US, do it there. Um, from what we've heard from some of our readers, it's more expensive than India. Definitely more expensive than like Hong Kong and China and all those kind of places for sure. For Europe, it's kind of on and par. Yeah, it may be a little bit more expensive, yeah. but not like crazy expensive in comparison to Europe. Yeah. But yeah, I think... If you compare to Australia, it's, I would say it's about 10% more expensive than Australia, but it's kind of compensated with the currency. So it's kind of uh, maybe a little bit more expensive than Australia. Yeah, but I think in general, maybe if you are just coming for a trip to New Zealand, uh, in general, it's better to get clothing yeah. from where you're from um, and then bring it to New Zealand. Um, except for if you come from a country which might not sell like the sort of things that you might need in New Zealand, like, for instance, merino or layers, or if they don't sell things like uh, jackets, if you're coming in winter, if you can't get like any sort of warmer jackets or anything, then maybe wait till you're in New Zealand because it's true that in New Zealand they do sell obviously the clothing that's best for the weather here and, and yeah you'll be surprised by the amount of offering I mean for such a small country New Zealand has for outdoor kind of clothing they have a ton like they have some New Zealand brands but they also have international brands but like really a massive offering of outdoor clothing so finding what you need is very easy in New Zealand but the price may be a little yeah. bit higher. So that's why we recommend if you're here for a long period of time, you know, if you're coming on a working holiday and you want to stay here for one year and you may do some extra travel and everything, get your equipment here because you'll have a, a plethora of choice. Yeah. But if, you, if you're just coming here for a couple of weeks, maybe just, you know, um, get, the stuff from get everything home. you need yeah. from home. Yeah. Um, Meg says, thank you. Well, you're very welcome, you're welcome. Meg. Uh, BN everywhere says so very expensive. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a bit more of a tepid opinion on that. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, Adil says I'm from South Africa, not India. Ah, oh, sorry, but yeah, you can do that for South Africa. Do a channel uh, to explain yeah. how to travel in South Africa. <laughs> you have to do a lot of traveling there. We we spend a long time traveling, and we do travel all the time here. Yeah. Uh, S. Colony says, do you have a list from your 365 day trip any uh, activities, or is it only the playlist? So, um. There's a couple of things you can do to find that. So you can go, uh, you can go on the playlist, and you can literally just go through the playlist and watch them all. Uh, or we do have them on the website actually. So on the uh, backpackerguide.nz website, you can actually go, and I'll show you. I'll show you on the tablet right here. Uh, let me just do that for you. All right, cool. So if you click on activity, which is the second one right here, and then you have video review and blog reviews. And depending on which one you prefer, you can click on blog reviews and you have a whole write-up which goes even more in depth. You know us, we love to go over crazy yeah. information. Mm -hmm. So if you go on blog review right here, for example, you get uh, this page right here and you have every single one of them one by one right here and you can click on it and you have uh, you have the whole description. You will have like some, um, some 360s photos and everything like that so of all those things. Look at that, you have all the information. This may load at some points and it's loading give it a minute yeah we live right now so it's loading really slowly so you get plenty of information right here so you have all of them in writing form right here if that's what you're looking for so um so yeah so it's on the website and it's on activities and then blog reviews so um that's where you have the entire list of these 365 days 365 activities yeah and they're probably a little easier to sort yeah. of follow on there as well i know on youtube things can be a little bit all over the place but if you want sort of like but we have see... one big playlist on youtube that goes in order don't it we? is in order oh yeah okay Oh yeah, I think so. Okay, well yeah, I hope so. but yeah, the play, play either obviously you guys obviously prefer YouTube and stuff, so um, yeah, the playlist on YouTube would be the best thing to go and check all that out. But otherwise, yeah, on backpackerguides.nz we do have the list, and it sort of says the day numbers and um, and a link to um, either the videos or the blog post on what we do on each day. Uh, cool. And uh, then we have Ravi Ravi Raj that says, if you have if you have one more extra day, what would we recommend adding to your seven days southern itinerary? Um, I think one day is it enough to go to Southland? Maybe not. Eh? 
No, uh, maybe if then. you're leaving or starting from Christchurch, then I would recommend going to Akaroa. Definitely. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. So Akaroa is definitely something you can do in a day trip. It takes, um, I think, just under two hours to drive over there. I think it's more like an hour and a half or something. But the drive over there is quite scenic. And once you get over there, then it's really known for its wildlife activities. You can do sort of wildlife boat cruises dolphin swimming you can go and see little blue penguins on a penguin colony tour and um, also the town itself is known for being the french town of new zealand or the french, bonjour, bonjour, french baguette, capital come on of new zealand so yeah <laughs> the town itself is quite interesting it's got quite a lot of nice eateries and bakeries and um all that sort of fun stuff there's also a little there's a fun little lighthouse you can go and visit there's a couple of short walks around so yeah akaro is definitely a really cool day trip to do and you'll go back and forth to christchurch where i assume that's where you'll be taking your flight out of yeah boom uh joti says josi ma ma mahalingam says thank you for uh, thank you our itinerary for 26 days in new zealand i'm from kenya hey from kenya 26 days you're gonna have wow. a blast so you did check or uh, i'm guessing you watched the video uh, that we have about the um Three weeks each in your I'm guessing. So that's why you say thank you. But um, yeah, you're very welcome. It's uh, it was it, I did like I do like doing like each in your which are longer. So if you guys have a certain amount of days and something you like, so the best way to ask us for itineraries, right, is um, either to come on the live videos like that, or you can put it in the comments of any of our videos, and then we it's always kind of the question that we pick up the first because we really do like them. Yeah. Um, so you go on uh, on the comment section of any of our videos and you tell us how long you're going to be uh, coming to New Zealand, where you're going to start and where you're going to finish, and what are the few things that you like. You know, if you mostly want to do hikes and do this and do that, and also who you're traveling with. If you're traveling with kids or, you know, if you're two 30 years old something, you're going to definitely travel very different than if you are two 60 years old something with your grandkids. So give us some context right here. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, if you give us that, we're always so happy to pick up the map and do a which looks like this. Boom! And we write <laughs> up the itineraries. We give you like where you, where you should do every places and everything. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so definitely ask us for itineraries if you guys have some. Uh, actually, we have three minutes left with you guys, so don't ask us for itineraries. <laughs> ask ask us quick week. question, quick <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um, Athira says, I wanted to shop for some merino wool stuff, but I found it really expensive. A bit surprising for a country that has so many sheep. Finally, I purchased the gloves. It was chilling around 6 to 12 degrees in spring. Yeah, it's it's New Zealand. It, sometimes you have super hot springs. Like at the moment, I think it's about 30 degrees. It's ridiculously yeah. hot. But it literally has only just started like to be warm. Yeah. yeah, so it has taken a while, to, especially this year, for the weather to get warm. So that's why we always sort of uh, recommend you guys to prepare for any diff any type of weather scenario. And even in summer, bring some extra layers just because when the sun does go down or when it get, goes behind some thick clouds, you can really feel the temperature dip. dip difference compared to when the sun's really shining like super hot so definitely be prepared for any type of weather scenario yep um uh Escondi says uh, i found it thank you oh yeah you found the list of the blogs i'm guessing uh you guys have so much information it's a treasure trove of info but there is great stuff to search through yeah cool. i mean yeah we we've done a lot and we keep <laughs> on doing a lot um but yeah happy that you find that uh definitely give us some feedback if there's thing that you can't find or, or this and that we actually um the website may change look uh, at some point quite soon so mm -hmm. be Spoiler prepared <laughs> be prepared it's okay it's still the same website it's still the same wording we may just have to change the look to make it look a little bit newer because the website looks a little bit old right now. So um, a bit of a spoiler right yeah. here. You, you guys may see that happen soon. It's a uh, backpacker guide exclusive. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Only you guys will it's know just about it. This is just it. <laughs> but yeah, oh, actually, that's the first time that we're saying it to yeah. anyone. So that's fun. Um, so yeah, so we actually are working on uh, kind of uh, rebranding and re making it look a little bit newer and nicer. And hopefully it's going to be easier to search. And, and we'll be looking for some feedback from you guys. So, you know, maybe check out the website in the next three, four days and just uh, come back in the next live video and tell us either, Robin, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Robin, you need to change back. Oh, just tell us, you know what? I think it's better like that. We can get used to that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we probably will talk about that next week. So, uh, you know, maybe you should show up next week again. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is a bit exclusive. 
Uh, Athira says they prefer the cli climate. They say it was cooler than their thoughts, which is quite cool. Um, the days were longer. The days, yeah. Well, we like the day is actually getting even longer and longer now since we're getting closer to the summer solstice. So the the, 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 the days are definitely like now the sun is up at five and it's going down, down at, at nine. nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Baby Burns Z says, <laughs> Baby Burns Z. <laughs> Interesting name. <laughs> you should be a rapper with that name. Yeah. Baby Burns Z, drop that beat. <laughs> Any tips on clothes during autumn? Because I always feel cold outdoor. Long John plus coat or anything. Yeah, so Marion Wall. I feel like we've been talking about Marion Wall the whole <laughs> video. Definitely Marion Wall. I, for New Zealand's biggest gap year, was wearing long johns literally almost the entire year. Yeah. So long johns, if you guys don't know what that is, because I didn't wa know what it was before I arrived in New Zealand, they are kind of skin tight layers, like those old like Western kind of uh, uh, underwear that you used to wear <laughs> that does the whole leg and you put that on and it's really skin tight. And then you put your clothes over that. So it's just an extra merino layer that keeps you nice and snug. Uh, I wore them for the whole time. And we also had that kind of like, you know, same thing like skin tight uh, merino layer on top at all time. Yeah. Keeps us really warm, uh, you know, all the time. We're not big fan of really, really thick coats because the weather kind of changes all the time. So we like rather lighter coats, but, uh, you know, more layers. So, um, you know, I used to have this uh, a tight uh kind of long john like style in on the bottom and on top and then i had um a merino wool layer and then i had uh, either another jumper or straight away just a, a coat or jacket but nothing really heavy yeah um, feel free to check out new zealand's biggest gap here just pause when you see us and look at what we're wearing it's pretty kind of easy to kind of see us yeah what we wear. there's also a video of us shopping i think at torpedo 7 as well if i remember uh, there's not a video we did a, yeah. a blog post oh yeah well there's yeah. a blog post about it <laughs> but yeah we also do have um, a video which is a complete packing list to uh coming to new zealand and we do mention a lot of stuff and we actually show you guys a lot of things as well that we rec that we've been talking about and especially the types of bags that we use and things like that so go and check out that video if you just type in on youtube uh, packing list New Zealand. You sh you should see our faces, and you can go and check that out. Yeah. Um, and then Jyoti says we are a family of four, including uh, a 16 month baby and 11 years old kid. Hope the baby shall adjust to the climate sooner. Um, well, it depends when you're coming to New Zealand. Now that's the thing. If you come to New Zealand with young kids in summer, you've got to be super prepared for the sun. Right. Um, it is stronger. Then seriously, some of the craziest sun you, you can you can have in the world, right? Because the whole in the ozone layer is right on top of New Zealand. So the UV levels are actually higher than most countries in Africa. What? Yeah. But, but it's New Zealand. But yeah, it, you burn really fast and really quickly. So they're going to need um, a sunscreen um, sunscreen on uh, all the time. I was actually, I, I know it sounds like a, a crazy story, but I was traveling with, uh, you know, by bus and we were like a group of youngsters and everything like that. And um, there were a guy that actually was joking. Um, he was from South Africa, I think, or anything like that. So he was black, right? And he was kind of joking, like, oh, you guys, you know, you might mocking us. I like, got oh, you pasty white and opening the sunscreen all the time. Well, he actually had, not a big one, but he had a bit of a sunburn the next day. On day two in New Zealand, he had a sunburn, which I found absolutely crazy. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around how crazy the sun is it in is, New Zealand. It is, yeah. It's really and crazy. people, even from Australia, when they come over to New Zealand and they say, like, obviously, Australia, a lot of Australia has a much hotter climate than New Zealand. But when they compare it to coming to New Zealand, which obviously is not too far away, they always say how intense the sun feels in New Zealand in comparison to Australia so it's just really yeah it's just the, the sunscreen, intensity sunscreen, of the sun sunscreen sunscreen yeah. sunscreen yeah all right so um Gilles says I can't next week I'll be in New Zealand oh well if oh, you well. find internet connection join us otherwise just pick us a message talk to us during the week because next week you'll be in New Zealand. So talk to us during the week. Check out the website. If you have some last minute questions, make sure to put them in the comments about other videos as well. Because you may be like two minutes, two two days before the party, be like, oh, I should have asked them this. Mm -hmm. And that can happen. Um, Athira says, thank you so much for all the video and advice. We really promote your channel to my friend and colleague in case they want to plan a trip to New Zealand. Thank Ooh, you very thank much. You. That's always nice. Esco Connolly says, thank you again. You guys are so helpful. 
Thank you very much. That's very nice. And Jyoti say, thank you very much, Moshe Pashedi. Thank You're you as welcome. well. Look at that. You know, people say the internet is a bad place and there's all those <laughs> yeah. mean people. It's a everything. very polite place. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I feel like we created a community of nice, kind and helpless. And I think yeah. we have we have ourselves like a nice, safe corner of the internet. Yes. You know, a lot of people say like the internet can be crazy. Honestly, I think all, all corner of the internet is a nice place to be at. Yeah. And that's, that's thanks to you guys. You guys are awesome. Always kind of, you know... Uh, being nice to us, you know, asking us questions, helping us create good content. So thank you a ton. Now, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week at the very same time, which is... So that's 8 a.m. New Zealand time on a, on a Sunday. Sunday. And it is Saturday in the UK or France at 8 p.m. or 21 in France. Uh, USA, 3 p.m. EST or uh, 12 p.m. PST. India, it's 12.30 a.m. And Australia, it's 6 a.m. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to take a second in the comment below right now to put what time it is uh, an hour ago in here with your location, you say like California, it's 3 p.m. or whatever. So like that, if you are stumbling upon that, check the live chat and you'll be able to find what time it was. So I think that's a cool thing to do if you guys want to do that before we finish. But thank you very much. Have a lovely week and we we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yep, see you next week.